Well, hello. Or shall I say, Marhaben. Ni hao. Bonjour. Guten tag. Shalom. Salve. Konnichiwa. Zdravstvoja. Hola. Good dog. All right. All right. I'll stop abusing your languages. And I'll go back to just torturing English like a proper American. My name is Clef, a.k.a. We Beasties. Hey, I'm a microbiologist. What can I say? And I just want to welcome you to this, our first in our series of videos in the Combat Boot Camp program. I want to just be clear at the outstart that I don't have any affiliation with Ross Mortel or with Compass Games. This is completely unofficial. I'm just a player and a fan of the combat game system. The whole purpose of making these videos is to illustrate and explain some of the game processes and procedures that might cross up new players. I'm going to make some assumptions as I make these videos. One is that you are a new player to the combat series so I'm going to be covering the basics and working our way up. So some of this might be really review to more advanced players. Might You might be more advanced than me. The second is I'm going to assume that English may not be your first language. So I'm going to try to speak slowly and enunciate clearly. But I'll probably forget and get all riled up. So I will try to provide a transcript in the captions for these videos as well to help. And lastly, I'm going to assume that we're all friends here. I mean, we're bound together by, if nothing else, a common enjoyment of this game series. And as friends, I expect you to let me know when things are not clear or muddy or even wrong in the videos so that I can correct things. I want this to be useful and I want us to have fun. That is pretty much the groundwork. Now that we've gotten our introductions out of the way, let's proceed to our first lesson. So we'll begin our study with the sequence of play. Teaching combat, the game system, is a bit like when I try to teach immunology to my students. Every piece seems to be connected to several other pieces, and it's hard to figure out where to really start. But I think the sequence of play is a good place because everything else sort of hangs off of this framework. So let's run through the sequence of play and where to find it and some potential hang-ups in where you're going to find it. Combat is a fairly simple game when you think about it because the entire thing is just built of turns and each turn has five and only five sequential phases. Now I'm going to talk about where each of our modules in boot camp is going to fit into these phases to try to hang this together sort of like a framework for you. So a turn begins in phase one where we deal with our friendly cards. We're going to have cards and initiative to deal with here. I'll run through some of the basics today, but we're going to cover these more in detail in the fourth and fifth sessions. Then we assign orders. We'll talk about friendly orders in session six. Notice that you have to commit yourself and your soldiers and the friendly units for an entire turn before you know what the enemy is going to do in combat. Phase three is where the enemy units, the German units, get their cards and orders. At the end of three we'll be able to determine the initiative order. Stage four is when we will do most of the gameplay. Phase four is split into four impulses. We'll have multiple teams for the friendly and enemy forces and multiple soldier, soldiers on each team and we'll iterate through all of those things and we have a lot to talk about that applies to this because phase four is when most of the action takes place. Once all four f impulses of phase four have been completed we move to the last phase which I split into two. This is my own creation. I think of this phase as having a resolution step and then a cleanup step. 
in resolution we we resolve any outstanding attacks that are figured out at the end of the turn which includes things like grenades and smoke and rallying and then cleaning up involves removing all the order counters and resetting the counter track and initiative track and getting ready for the next turn that is the sequence of play in a nutshell you can find the sequence of play in many places the best place and the first place you'll probably encounter it is in the rule book section 4 of the rule book gives you the complete and correct sequence of play all five steps all five phases are listed here completely and this is what I would consider to be plan A if you've got your print copy of the game out and you're looking for a sequence of play go here to the rule book your print copy will also come with a player's aid card which has a sequence of play in it as well I would not use this um, there are a few issues with it for one thing the gr grenade resolution grenade I can speak English grenade resolution is omitted from this particular sequence and it doesn't talk about one to rally either technically so this isn't actually the most correct your rules are the most correct what I do though is I don't tend to have my rule book out I have that over by my bed for bedside reading I've printed out a PDF from Board Game Geek that I've made a link to that has the complete and correct sequence of play given for you and this particular document made by Poif Poif that's fun to say even more fun username than mine also has the check tables come on autofocus you can do it don't make me there you go so you got your resolution tables here too so I printed this and laminated it now the sequence of play is also available online in the vessel modules and we're going to go there next and take a look at where to find them in the vessel modules so in vessel we actually have two really good modules to pick from and both of them have sequence of plays included unfortunately not all of these sequence of plays are technically correct on the screen right now I have the farmhouse map from this is Nigel Rabbit's module to get at the sequence of play here I think we just need alt F2 let's see here alt F2 there we go that'll pull up the sequence of play this is the same one that you'll find in the game on the player's aid card but this is the one that doesn't have the grenade check part in step 5 so it's not technically correct usable but you're better off printing the one from poif poif or using the one out of your rule book now we also have another module this is the one from Greg Amos and here we have two different sequence of plays included we get the one up here off of the players aid card that's missing the grenade check that's incorrect so you can click for that right here next to the ten sided die but over here next to the green American deck star thing you have another sequence of play that is correct and has the grenades and this one has a little arrow you can drag around if you want to keep track of your place in the sequence of play as you're playing online in Vassal. So there you have two different modules with three different sequence of plays, one of which is actually technically correct. The other two are slightly flawed, usable once you remember that you just got to do grenade checks in phase five. So now it's time to consider the actual sequence of play, the five phases. Now I've made my own handout here to kind of summarize this. The sequence of plays that are available are great 
and they reference the rules and they're awesome but just walking through those I'm not really adding much value because you could do that yourselves so I'm trying to process in a different way the same material to try to make it easier to understand if that's possible so I view this whole sequence of play like a computer program sort of linear and you're walking through it step by step asking questions yes or no binary questions and there are a few loops like a proper computer program so let's just walk through it and we'll add more detail in future videos phase one friendly card phase start with the first question do you have any cards in your hand you'll start the game in the beginning of a scenario with a given hand it'll range from two to five cards by design you will be burning those cards each turn because you got to play one for initiative and there's only two ways to get cards back into your hand one of them is hey no I don't have any cards left then you get to draw one out of the deck and you proceed to B B the second way you can get cards is if a leader successfully completes a plan order they can earn some extra cards. If they've done that, you can add those cards to your hand. If not, you go on to C. Now you ask, do you have more than five cards in your hand? Because five is the most cards that you're allowed to have in your hand at any time. If you do not, you just proceed. If you do have more than five, then you must discard down to five. You get to choose which cards to get rid of. I've never had that happen. I never have that many cards. Lastly, of the cards in your hand, you have to pick one card and play it for initiative. And that'll end the card phase. We'll talk about playing for initiative and what initiative means in the future. In phase two, we give orders to all of our friendly units and we'll describe each of the orders in our one of our first videos. But each of your friendly units will be given an order and they are committed to a certain action for that turn and there's no really turning back there's ways to bail out and we'll talk about that but you can't really switch your order mid turn now it's the enemy's turn in phase three the enemy cards and orders occur now in here in this phase we're going to be using cards the AI to give orders to the enemy units and there's one of two kinds of scenarios large battles which have a lot of soldiers usually like more than 12 and smaller most of the time you'll be playing scenarios that are not considered large actions it'll be defined for you in the scenario information so most of the time it'll be no this is not a large battle in that case you draw one card for each enemy soldier and you'll be checking for grenade and charge attacks we'll talk about those attacks in the future and you'll apply the order that's on the card you've drawn based upon the soldiers cover and morale state and sometimes proximity to a friendly unit that would be for charge and grenade attacks if this was the first card for a team let's say red team or blue team or yellow team or white team then this card will be used in the initiative template the initiative card for the initiative for that color if not you just discard it and you do that over and over for each soldier you just draw a card and look at their cover look at their morale state look at the proximity to the friendly soldiers and you'll give them an order now if it is a large battle scenario then it's even easier you just draw f four cards for the four colors i assume if it's a large battle you'll be using all four teams so you get one card for blue one for red one for yellow one for white and then you just check for every soldier on the board of that color the corresponding colors card and assign the order that is on there we'll go over this in a future video just laying the framework here for you so now all the friendly units and all the enemy units have orders 
and we will have committed our card for initiative and each of the enemy teams will have initiated a put a card in for initiative and we will be able to use those numbers to establish the initiative order that'll be the order the teams play in we'll talk about initiative soon the fourth phase is the busy phase it's where all of our actions take place and this phase is basically three nested loops you've got a for loop in computer programming for each of the four turn impulses each turn has four impulses we have our big loop our outermost loop here for each impulse we go in the loop that is inside of that is for each team in initiative order from lowest initiative order to highest initiative number so you go low to high we're going to check one team at a time so first impulse first lowest initiative team then for each soldier in that team we run our in innermost loop the innermost loop has three steps so each impulse each team each soldier of that team one resolve the action that you have given to that soldier either friendly or enemy two after they have performed their action they may attempt to spot any hidden opposing forces that are in line of sight and then three there's a possibility to duck back that's the way to bail out of an order there are conditions for the enemy where they can duck back and you as a friendly soldier can always choose at the end of this one two three to duck back the enemy actions are started at the top of the map and work down so you start with the lowest row number and you work your way to the highest row number if you have more than one enemy on the same row pick the one that's closest to a friendly if they're equally close then just pick randomly that's it now we close our inner loop so right down get down here there proceed to the next soldier do that for each soldier in that team when that team the one with the lowest initiative is done go to the next lowest initiative team when you've completed all the teams you've completed that impulse go to the next impulse repeat the loops you just do this iteratively four times through this loop and eventually everybody will have had four impulses then we are ready to move on to the end phase where I split it up into two halves resolution and cleanup for resolution at the end of the turn after all four initiatives we resolve grenade attacks and we'll go over that specifically medics will attempt to bandage the wounds of any wounded soldier that they share a hex with if they have the the medical aid order any leader that has a plan order may attempt to execute that plan to earn more cards to be used in the next card phase any units that need to rally that have a rally command they can attempt here we adjust our smoke we'll talk about that and for the enemy waiting characters can be alerted and we're going to talk about enemy states in a future video then we clean up we remove all orders from friendly and enemy units we reset our initiative track we just take everybody off the order because we're going to make a new order next turn we discard all the initiative cards the enemy cards and the friendly initiative card return them to their discard pile and we reset the impulse marker from impulse four to impulse one and then we ask is it the last turn if it is it's the end of the game you just check the victory conditions if it's not advance the turn marker and do it all over again so it's basically just a simple linear flow it's really easy to get into the flow of this there's just a few things where you got to watch out you got to watch your resolutions in the end of five and not try to do things early we're going to add a lot of detail into this overall framework
But this is our introduction to the sequence of play. I hope that you found it useful. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you just give me a quick thumbs up as a sign that I'm hitting the mark. If I'm missing the mark in some way, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a comment so that I can make these better. Because in the end, that's all I really care about is making these things useful. I'll see you guys next time.